Hello everyone, and welcome back to the layout. This is going to be our layout update, workbench, workbench update for May of 2023. This is going to cover everything I've been working on here recently. Uh, a lot of you have been following along with my weekly uh, scenery updates, but this is going to kind of encompass everything here. So we're going to go ahead and start off over here in this main corner. I've been doing scenery work here. And we'll kind of pan over there is where we started. We built our wall up. And then we came all the way over and did this corner finally. We'll kind of zoom in a little bit here. Zoom back out. But uh, this is not 100% done, but it's what I call good enough to run stuff again. Um, I've got a lot of my, I, well, I pretty much have all my base materials down, but I don't have a lot of little detail stuff done yet. But this is just kind of the get it to where I can run trains again kind of point. That was really my goal here was to get to that point and then move forward. And I can always come back and add the little details later. So right now I got a little, little excited last weekend. So I didn't get these uh, more front tracks cleaned yet. I still have to go through with the bright boy and clean all the paint and the glue and stuff off them yet. But I still have to do this uh, front track here yet. I think I'm actually going to take this wheel cleaning track and move it down below as I think what I end up going with. I'm going to put a road crossing right here for vehicles, but that's kind of a down the road project. Right now, my focus is just to get this to where I could run trains again. So um, that's kind of a good overview of what's what this ended up looking like. Now I'll go ahead and turn the camera around and show you the big, big project here from last weekend. All right, so now we're looking at our uh, opposite corner here. As you guys can tell, I, I got really excited here this last weekend. I went ahead and basically did from the bridge all the way over. Um, really just kind of wanted to get this knocked out so I go back to running trains and at least have this base level of scenery done. Um, this is going to be the maintenance of way shop right here for the trucks and equipment, etc. Um, some of you know I'm a truck driver, so... I kind of like having the little model trucks, even though they're not necessarily prototypical for Conrail. I just enjoy having them. So this is going to be a little maintenance away shop building. Um, actually going to put a little crossing right here for trucks to enter and exit. There'll be a sign with the maintenance away shops on it, etc. And we'll go ahead and we're going to zoom into the back here a little bit. Um, I decided to put this cold tip I had laying around over in the corner here. It's kind of obstructed. Let me see if I can. There we go. Um, kind of went ahead and wanted to put that in the corner just that way it kind of hides the corner in the end of those tracks um, it's going to be abandoned it's not going to be in operation or anything I obviously still have to weather it and, and do all that work to it yet but I just wanted to have it there just to show y'all you know what it's going to look like roughly so that way I kind of show that off a bit you see there's some old piles of coal there and there and then we'll go ahead and we'll zoom back out a little bit we'll come a little bit more towards uh, the bridge area what I'm going to have here, let me get that right, these um, front two tracks, this track's just going to have a string of ballast hoppers sitting on it. It's probably going to stop right about the bridge and it's going to be kind of abandoned from here over because it actually goes to the paper recycling plant, but this is going to be kind of a little abandoned stretch of it right here. This front track will be um, the one that actually sees service, but uh, I got a little loading dock deal here where we're going to put gondolas and flat cars so that maintenance away could on and offload things and i'm also going to um have signals over in this area here uh, right now i'm kind of in a bit of a pickle because uh, old steve did a little bit of a dum dum when he originally put down the track over here and there's not quite enough room to have a signal between um I guess you'd call it track two, my inside track, and the uh, yard lead track. It just doesn't fit. So right now I'm trying to kind of figure out what I want to do, whether I want to put um, one, like the one down right in here on the inside of the corner for um, track two, and then put the other one kind of down over the other side of the bridge here for track one, or if I just want to have them both over there in that corner area. The real problem is I have um, two-way signals, essentially. Let me, I'll pull one out here. I have these um, type G two-way signals, so I don't want to have them where you can't see both sides of it. That's kind of my current dilemma in trying to figure out where I want to put those at, but 
I'll hopefully I'll have that done sometime by July. That's the current goal, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this really kind of took a lot of energy and effort here. And I really, really hope to have some videos running trains up again next week. That's the goal. I still got, as you guys can tell, I have a lot of track. I got a clean from basically right over here over to the bridge. I have to do all the tracks and then from right here on back over the corner, I got to do these front yard tracks yet. So um, that's about it for the layout part of the update. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to show a few handful of projects I've been working on this month. Uh, as Lee, I usually do, this is going to be more of a normal update here. So let's head on over and check out some of the other stuff I've been doing. All right. So for the locomotive projects I've been up to this last month, um, a big one was this Rapido B36-7, the Southern Pacific unit. I went ahead and added ditch lights to it and just did some weathering. Um, just kind of a cool unit. This is going to be on a intermodal train here uh, very, very soon. And then another unit I also finished up this month was the 9747 here. This was one that the front handles handrails got just completely broke and destroyed on that I had to remake them. And they're not even close to perfect, but it's better than not having any at all. Um, another project, big, big project I've been doing away from the layout this month was actually all of these uh, well cars you guys can kind of see, but not really in the background there. Um, I think I had six or seven sets of well cars with containers I went through and weathered that those will be in a video here coming up uh, hopefully next week. I, I hope to have it out next week. Just got to do some finishing work on them yet and then get them ready to roll let's head on over to the paint booth and i could show off what i've been up to over there all right so now we're over here at the paint booth and the majority of what i was working on again was the well car train um the intermodal containers and all that but a couple of the other projects i kind of dove into when i had time this month was a few more csx uh, covered hoppers i'm gonna have in cement service these first two are actually atlas trainman cars that um, you guys know me, I'm a sucker for a deal. And I got, you know, th these are just ones I picked up in lots that were painted for other things that I repainted into and uh, decaled into CSX. So this is the first one, just painted it and then decaled it to prototype photos. The next one we have here is uh, this one. Just, you know, slightly different variations really in the decaling and stuff. And then this last car is a Walther's two base cement car that uh, also was painted for something else and I repainted into CSX to use here on the for my layout. Um, just because that's generally how I get my deals. It doesn't always have to be the car I'm going for. If I could repaint it, I could repaint it. But uh, next up here we have, I'm just gonna show one of these, but this is just one of the well cars I was talking about. Um, these ones still have to be clear coated yet. I haven't gotten quite that far, but um, I kind of kept the weathering pretty simple on these. Basically all it was was some airbrush, some rust on the trucks, um, came through and did a black wash on both the car and the containers, just went lighter on some, heavier on others, and then painted the wheels and couplers just to give me a good, you know, looks weathered look without looking too weathered and without spending, you know, six hours per set of cars. So that's the majority of what's over here right now. We're going to head over to the workbench and catch the last few things I've been up to. All right, so we're over at the workbench now. And uh, this is a project I procrastinated on a little bit, namely because I was waiting on this little, um, oh gosh, this little antenna stand here on the top. But this is a cotton belt SD45-2T one of the tunnel motors. I believe this one was a rebuilt one specifically, but this is one I've been working on the weathering a little here and a little there. And uh, it just kind of wasn't in the mood really to mess with it. And then the last couple of days, I kind of got excited and started working on it a little bit more. And as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out so far. It's just really weather beaten and used, very well used. If I get the camera to sit here right that's one thing I've been up to right there. And now for some of the cool stuff. Um, this is going to be a weathering video, how-to video right here, this particular car. This is an Atlas 3-bay ACF uh, covered hopper. And this car, I think I paid $10 for, actually. It was an Erie Lackawanna car. And I saw a prototype photo, and I just thought it was really cool. And I figured, you know what, that would make a good how-to video as well. So... 
Um, look for this in the coming weeks for a weathering how-to. I also, again, me and the deals, I actually picked up these uh, two bay chessy covered hoppers. I think I, these were, I want to say 15 or 20 bucks each, but uh, really nice cars from Ather. And again, um, I saw them and said, you know what, those would be really cool for some weathering projects. So I grabbed them and I found prototype photos I liked a lot. So this car, um, as well as this one, will both be in the same weathering video. And the reason for that is I kind of want to show how you can get different results using the same techniques, essentially, like this car and this car look very different, but I used the same set of techniques to do them both. So um, look for that hopefully in the next couple weeks as well. I got to edit all that together. I still got to get uh, shots of the cars running. And then this project, uh, this is what I call a kind of like a hanger, if you will. This one sat over by my paint booth for about the last three months because I just wasn't really into working on it. It sat over here by the workbench for like a month because I just didn't, I just wasn't really inspired to mess with it. And then out of nowhere, I kind of got this rust streaking deal going on on it. And I had a little bit of a cement streaking coming down it and got some cement spillage on the top as well. And, um, Finally got that done, thankfully. Still got to do all the finishing work before I get over to the layout, but it's uh, come quite a long way. Now I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek of what I'm up to for next month here. Um, I'm sure a few of you are going to be familiar with this here, the Seaboard Central, uh, Mr. Tim Garland's layout. Um, I've been a big fan of his for the last few years, ever since I saw his layout on YouTube. He's one of the people I really watched and enjoy his work. Um, so when they came out with these box cars, naturally I, I had to grab two of them and, uh, I'm not sure if this is the one or not, but I got them in and I was kind of looking them over and I was like, yeah, oh, that's kind of interesting. I noticed something and, uh, let me see if I can get, uh, uh, oh, these have separately applied doors. You know what that means, folks? That means we can open up the door on this box car. So that's actually going to be a how-to video I'm going to shoot here uh, in the coming weeks is how to take a car like this that has a separately applied door and open this up so that way you could have the door. Like, I'm going to have it just slightly open. So um, hopefully some of you guys will want to see that. I'm sure a few of you already know how to do it, but I'll go ahead and show how to do that. I've done that on quite a few cars now, and it's really something neat that I like to do. Um, you know, depending on the car, you can have them all the way open, have them a little bit open. It's really whatever you want to do. So, um, as always, guys, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody that's been sticking around here this last month while I haven't been posting my usual stuff and I've been focusing on scenery mainly. Uh, hopefully, if not next week, the following week, we should be back to the normal, regularly scheduled programming. It's just been a lot of work trying to get the scenery wrapped up and get back to doing things normally again, but, uh, Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.